morning. Welcome to South Haven First United Methodist Church at 723 Star Landing Road East. It's good to have everyone in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to have those that are watching online this morning. And we appreciate you uh, participating in our online worship service this morning. A few announcements this morning to highlight for you. First of all, no Bible study this week. Uh, Sam's out of town and uh, no, sir, no Bible study coming up either Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Also, no men's club breakfast next Saturday, even though it is the first Saturday of the month. Good news, though, Sunday school will resume next Sunday. So if you're a member of a Sunday school class or would like to be a member of a Sunday school class, please come and join us. I think one of the classes starts around 9.45, is that correct? And the other one starts somewhere around 10 o'clock. So come and join us for Sunday school next Sunday. Also coming up on uh, Sunday the 13th, there will be a uh, lay leadership committee. It used to be called the nominations committee. Now it's called lay leadership. And that will be at 3 o'clock on Sunday the 13th. And those members who need to attend should be on the screen this morning. Uh, fall festival is coming up on the 19th. Uh, plans have been made for that and a lot of work put into it, so please be aware of that. And also thanks to those who, Marcia asked me to thank those who donated and fixed boxes for the uh, United Methodist Corps, uh, Corps of Relief. Uh, the Christmas boxes. We had, I think, 29 or 30 boxes that we prepared, so thanks to the congregation and to others who were participating in that event. Birthdays this week. O.D. Sullivan has a birthday this week, as does Pat Noah, so if you see these people, be sure to wish them happy birthday. Also, anniversaries this week. Next Saturday, Tony and Colleen Crum have an anniversary. Any other announcements? from the congregation this morning. If not, would you join me, please, in our first hymn. It's Jesus Calls Us. It's number 398 in your hymnal, but it will be on the screen behind me. We will sing verses 1, 4, and 5.
going to invite Bill Ross up to lead us in prayer this morning, but I want to lift up a couple of special prayers this morning. I got a text from Ken Waters this morning, and most of you know, if you were here for Bible study this week, that Katie had some type of seizure and fell and really messed her mouth and her nose and her teeth up. She fell face first. Uh, they carried her to the hospital and on to the bonner where they did release her and she was back at home. But in his text this morning, she had another episode around 2 o'clock this morning. And she's doing all right right now, but Ken's been up with her all night long and won't be here at church. But he asked if we please pray for Katie and, and pray for him and his family this morning. So in your prayers this morning, please lift these people up, these dear, dear, precious folks that we love so much. Also, I would ask you to keep Sam and Sandy in your prayers this morning. They're traveling. Uh, they were scheduled to go on vacation this week and go to North Carolina with their friends from Pennsylvania. But right now, they're on their way to Laurel, Mississippi. Uh, I think most of you know that her aunt, Luella Condra, I believe was her last name, uh, did pass away in the graveside services at 3 o'clock this afternoon in Laurel, and they are going to stop and have lunch with Trey and Guy and then go on to the funeral service at 3 o'clock. Then they will leave there and head to North Carolina. I assume knowing those two drive all night long. But uh, please be in prayer for them as uh, this will be a rough day for Sandy, I'm sure. And uh, like I said, they need your prayers this morning. Beth Ellen and Blaze are uh, called to prayer this morning. I invite uh, Bill to come on up. this morning, Father, that we have a nation that is in turmoil, where violence is rampant, where so many are being led astray. But while all that's going on, we rejoice in the fact that you are still in charge, that you are faithful, O oh God, and we claim that promise this morning that you will never leave us. I lift up this church to you this morning. I lift up to you, Ken and Katie and all their family, as that you be with them. Be with Sam and Sandy on their journey and keep them safe. <coughs> Help us as a church to grow, Father. Not necessarily in numbers, but help us to grow in spirit and in service to you to each other our community, and our nation. I lift up this nation to you this morning, Father, and ask you to be with our president, our members of Congress, members of our courts throughout the land. Be with them, Father, and I ask you to just pour your spirit out on this nation and convict us, Father. Convict us from the highest to the lowest, from the mightiest to the least, convictors of the necessity of making decisions that will cause this nation to turn to Jesus Christ for our hope, yeah. our redemption, and our salvation as a nation. Restore this nation to a right relationship with you, I pray. Hear us now, Father, as our voices become one, and we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we begin to go over to this past ancestors. And he is not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Would you now please stand for the reading of God's 
holy word. Look here. You say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It is here a little while and it's gone. What you want to say is, if the Lord wants us, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own plans. And all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do. May God bless the reading and the hearing of His holy word. And all of God's feet together said, Amen. And God bless you. Thank you. Please be seated. Once again, join me now for a word of prayer. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, as we come here now gathered together, both in person, join together physically, but also join together spiritually. No matter how it is, we are still one with each other with you at this moment. And we thank you. We thank you for this time which you have brought us together. And we ask you now to just lead us and guide us through this time of sharing your holy word. Anoint us now with your spirit in a great and mighty way. But as always, dear God, I pray for that double portion of your spirit. To anoint me in such a way that as I now stand before your church, that your church will not hear me, but instead at this moment will hear the voice of Jesus. In greater zeal, that as they look their eyes up this way, that instead of seeing me, those standing here in my place, they will now see Jesus himself. And I ask all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There was once a wealthy socialite who had gone to see a famous therapist to help her with some problems that she was having. Well, at their very first session, the therapist said to her, Well, tell me something about yourself. Well, the woman needed no second invitation. She took off and she used the entire hour, the entire complete hour, doing nothing but talking about herself. Now, this went on every week for four straight weeks. At the end of that fourth session, the therapist finally in frustration stopped the woman and he said to her, Madam, my best advice for you is to immediately leave this office and go straight to Niagara Falls. Take a train, take an airplane, take a bus, go by automobile, I don't care. Go by any means available. But get yourself to Niagara Falls as soon as you can. Well, the woman looked at the therapist and asked him, well, why do I need to go to Niagara Falls? Upon which the therapist said to her, because the only thing that will ever help you is for you to go and take a long, lingering look at something that is bigger than yourself. In our scripture passage for today, once again we have James, the brother of Jesus, sharing with us what I want to call the next step. The next step that we are called to take in our relationship with God and with Jesus Christ. Now last week we were together and I talked about the fact that I'm always saying that when it comes to our relationship with God, that first and foremost, we must have Him. We must know Him as our personal Savior. And then, in chapter 4, verses 4 through 10, James now, in his letter, shared with us that once we know Him as our personal Savior, 
that it should not end there, that we need to then take it to the next step. That we need to go to the next step of taking our relationship with Christ in knowing Him as a personal friend, to have a relationship of friendship with Jesus. And in doing this, if you were with us, you remember that He shared. He shared three things that we need in our lives that can then help us to answer those two very personal questions that I asked each and every one of us last week. First off, can Jesus call you his friend? And then I followed up with an even simpler question. Are you a friend of God's? Now in looking at what James is telling us today, when most people read this, they see it as nothing more than a reminder of the uncertainty of life. He's talking about the fact that we are not promised tomorrow. We do not know about tomorrow because we do not know when death will come for us. And because of this, we should live each day on this earth as if it is our very last day. And all of this that he's saying, it is true. Because just as James described that life is like a morning fog, some say a mist, other versions have the word a vapor. No matter what, it is true because when it comes to life, life is something that comes along and then it's gone in an instant. But as we look at this, I believe that James' message for us it is not a call to prepare for the uncertainty of death and uncertainty of life. And why would I say this? Well, think about it. James knows the same, the same thing that you and I have already done. That when you truly and completely give your life to Christ, then you no longer have any reason to worry about death. In fact, for those who belong to Christ, Death should be the last word on our mind. should be the last thing that we ever think about. Why? Because we know that with Christ living within us, then we have the promise of the living God, the one true living God, in which He promises us that we will never experience death, but instead have eternal life. And we can receive this promise. We can base our life upon this promise because it is a promise. That has been signed, it has been sealed, and most importantly, it's been delivered to us by the blood of Jesus himself, there upon his cross. That is why I now believe that it should be, it can be, for each and every one of us, exactly, exactly as my friend Leslie Patrick. Leslie once told me something as I after one Wednesday night, we were walking inside for the Wednesday night Bible study, and I looked at her and I asked, Leslie, tell me, how are you doing today? And with a smile on her face that I know, I know came directly from the throne of God, she looked at me and said, Brother Sam, I am doing great today because I am now one day closer to heaven. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I had never thought about anything like that before, and it just blew me away. But it also brought a great truth into my life, and it's because of this truth. That is not for me. Once again, this is not about the uncertainty of death. No, what this is about for me is about the certainty of life. It is actually about the certainty of life. And I say all this because I believe me that if this is so all we seek to understand, we understand from what James is sharing with us, then we're still going to miss the true, complete point of what he's trying to tell us. Because like I said, this is much more than living a life, living a life waiting for death to come. Instead, what we need to understand is that this is a call for us to now move into the next part of our relationship with God. Now we know this, that as Christians, we are called. We are called to not live our lives each day looking at our past. We're not to be spending our time always worrying about our past sins and the mistakes that we have committed. 
But what we also need to know is this, that as Christians we are also called to not spend all our time looking at the future. As Christians, we're not supposed to spend all our time trying to focus on our minds on what the future may or it may not hold for us. No, for me, what James wants us to see and understand. If this is about how we as Christians now should see one thing each and every day in our lives, and that is to live our lives for today. To live our lives for today. To not worry about the past, don't worry about the future, but just live for God. Today, live for God each day, right here and right now. And to do this, James gives us two ways. That we can live right here and right now, while at the same time bringing us down into a complete relationship with Jesus. So what are these two ways? Well, first, we should live our lives each day trusting first in God. Now, did you hear what I just said or what God just said through me? Notice, I did not say live your life each day trusting in God. That's not what I said. No, for us to live in the right here and right now, we do it by trusting God. First in God. First in God. Not coming to God as your third or fourth trust, and especially not as your second. Well, but why not second? Well, that means you think in a second that you have actually placed him at the top. You have placed him at the top of your list. He was one of the first things that crossed your mind. But instead of trusting him, you decided to knock him down. Move them down that limit and trust in something of this world. But you see, you gotta understand, a true relationship with God comes when you trust in God first and foremost. And know everything that you do at the same moment with everything you need in your life. And we should do this because to trust in God means that you are placing both your today and your tomorrow in God's hands. This is important as Christians. This is important for us as Christians because we are called. We are called to not be controlled by the fear of uncertainty. Now you see, the mark of a true Christian can be found not in the fear in which they live, but in the certainty of the trust that they live. Or let me say it this way, if you get anything out of the service, Please receive this. Remember this. This is God's word for us. Because the mark of a true Christian is found in those who place their plans each day into the hands of God. One day I was out driving and I passed the church. And on the church side, I thought they had this statement. Write your plans in pencil. And then give God the eraser. Very familiar, right? Write your plans in pencil and then give God the eraser. Now, you know me. You know me very well. And as I read that, you know that I started mulling it over in my mind. And as I mulled it over in my mind, I kept thinking, well, that is a good lesson for our folks. But it really isn't good enough. It, it needs more. And what we actually need to do in our lives when it comes to making plans, what we should do is this. We should give God both the pencil and the eraser. And as I then thought about this, give both the pencil and the eraser to God, as I went along, I was very proud of myself. I was set up two or three more inches. I was very proud, very confident in my great spiritual insight, in my great spiritual wisdom, feeling very good about myself. When suddenly I heard a laugh. I heard this chuckle. And then I heard God speak to my spirit, and he said this. He goes, hey, Sam, I've got a better idea. Why don't you just give me the pencil? 
And then neither one of us will need an eraser. Then I'll die for it. Just give him the pencil and then neither one of you will need an eraser. See, this is the relationship we need to God. A complete relationship is trust. A relationship of trust that we need, that we should have with Jesus. Trusting him, yes, as your personal Savior. Trusting him as your best friend, but also completing him by trusting him with your life, your today, but more importantly, trusting him with your future. We must trust first in God. It helps to complete the relationship. But what would be the second one there? Well, simply the second, we should live our lives as lives of faith. Hear that again. We should live our lives as lives of faith. Now, if you remember last week we were together, I told you that as Christians, as Christians, we are called to live out our lives in a way in which people know more. But they know more than the fact that we are saved. That as Christians, we are called to show everyone that we know that we are saved. We know it. No doubt. Well, as Christians, we are called, I believe, to do the same thing when it comes to living out a life of faith. To show the world, not only do we have faith, but better yet, showing that we know. Showing that we know that we have faith. We have faith in God. And this is important. Because in doing this, this is how we show the world. We show the world that we know two things for certain. First off, we show them for certain that we do not know what the future holds. And that's not right. That's not a good one. That's not what we should know for certain. We should know something better than that for certain. No, the first thing for certain that we need to show for with our faith is this, that you do not want to know what the future holds. You don't want to know. Which then brings us to the second one. The reason why you don't want to know because God does know. Because God does know what the future holds and that's all you need to know. And knowing that, and knowing that God is going to hold the future is good enough for you. Why do we need to live this kind of faith out? Well, the truth is, folks, we've got people in this world, we've got a world filled with people who are obsessed with things like psychic hotlines, how the California psychics and they'll stop on the problem by telling you what your future holds. We've got people that open up the newspaper magazine, study astrology charts. Or have you ever been driving down a two-lane country road? And all of a sudden you come upon this old house and out front of that house is a sign that says, Mount Maroon, Paul Reader. Come in and I will tell you your future. What's sad is not the fact that the sign is out there. What's sad is there are three or four cars parked in the yard trying to get in. We live in a world that's obsessed. Psychic hotlines, astrology charts, palm readers, or anything that they believe can help them know what the future holds. But a true and faith-filled relationship with God, you know that you can only be happy in the fact that you do not know what lies ahead of you in the future. But you know this, that your joy and happiness comes in the fact that you know the one who holds the future in your hand. But you don't need anybody else. But you don't want to know what the future holds because your relationship is complete because you trust in the Lord. You have faith in the Lord who holds your future. And that's all you need to know. But the thing is this now, if you remember last week, James, he wanted us to know how important that it is for us to have a relationship of friendship with Jesus. And to show us how important it is, he gave us a warning. But well, once again, James, he wants us to know how important it is for us to have a complete 
relationship with God. But letting us know how important it is, he doesn't give us one warning. Instead, he gives us two warnings. The first warning is there in verse 16. The first warning is about all the times in our lives when we end up boasting about the things that we have done on our own. When we get up in front of others and say, look at what I did. Didn't I do a great job? You see, the thing is this, when you boast about your own plans, about yourself, you end up doing two things. First off, you are claiming to be more than you really are. You're claiming to be more than you really are. I mean, you must have guilty of that. The second is, first of all, that when you make your own plan, what you're actually doing, you're acting as if God does not exist. And this becomes an evil within your heart, an evil within your soul, because what you are doing is you're either placing yourself equal with God, or worse, you're placing yourself above God. We are not to do that. Do not boast about what you've done. Do not boast about who you are. Think to God. But then there's a second one there in verse 17. I want to read this verse to you again. Remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. You see, for James, the greatest sin of all is simply to continue every day placing your life into your own hands when now that you've been told not to do it. Instead of to place your hand, your life, to place your future into the hands of God. Since the ultimate sin to continue to live life being a self-confident habit of seeking to live your life your own way. Now, especially, that you know, you don't do it. You see, when you know that the future is not in your hands, but in the hands of God, that's when you truly open yourself up to Him. So now He shows us two things about how we can complete our relationship with God and share with us two warnings. The big question now is, what do we need to do? What do we need to do now to bring this all together? Well, in his book, Just Give Me Jesus, Reverend Randy Bishop, he writes about a woman named Anne Graham Lott. Now, Anne, she stands at just over five feet tall. And whenever she and her husband did attend a football game at his alma mater, the University of North Carolina, thousands of people crammed in into the parking lot. And because of her height, she cannot see where she is going. And whenever her husband did, he was standing six feet, eight inches. Can't look over the crowd and see which way they need to go. So she takes him by the hand and he leads her directly from their car, directly to their seats. Now in the book, she says this, the way I get from my car to our seats is just by holding on to my husband's hand, staying close to him, but more importantly, never letting go. She said, I trust him to lead the way because I know that he can look above the crowd and see the way that we need to go. Isn't that beautiful? Well, see, this is the way that we need to be in our relationship with God. This is how we need to be with God, holding on, never letting go. So you know that. You know that I have to ask this question. So let me ask you, do you have a complete relationship with God and Jesus in your life today? Or better yet, let me ask you this. Do you spend more time worrying about the future than you do spending time with the one who holds the future? That's what this is about. To have a true, complete relationship with Jesus as your Savior and as your friend. You can't spend all your time worrying about today. You can't worry about what the future may hold. And if you're someone today that you're spending more time worrying about the future 
of your family, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. You spend more time worrying about the future of this country than you are spending time with one who owns it all. Then your relationship is not So I'm asking you today, did you know I'd like to have a complete relationship with Jesus? Well, all you've got to do is give it all to you. Open yourself up right now. Those of you who are here in our church sanctuary, open yourself up and give your future. Your trust and faith in Him. Those of you who are home right now, watching us here, there in your recliner, your easy chair, sitting there on your couch, I'm calling on you to trust in Jesus, to have faith, to know you don't have to worry about the future because you trust in the one who holds that future. You can make the choice to do this today. Or you can make the same choice you do make it every day to worry about the future. To worry about things that are out of your control and just keep going on in an incomplete relationship with God. But remember, He came to us. He came into this world to have a relationship with us because that's how much He loves us and He wants to have that relationship with And so we're going to get open yourself up to this. And I'm going to invite Jim and Ben Bell and now they'll come on up take their places to lead us now in our closing hymn. And as you're hearing this song play, as you hear the word, follow along with those words, open your heart now. Open yourself up to Jesus. Have a complete relationship with Him. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 413, A Charge to Keep I Have. And we'll sing the first verse and the last verse this morning. Thanks for this morning, and for those of you who joined us online.